Welcome. Invite you just to move slightly and find a welcome place where you're sitting for your body. And gently let the eyes soften. As we say, go inside. And hear this from the guide's own words. The great stream of divine strength and blessings permeates you as a powerful yet peaceful and gentle force. The great stream of divine strength and blessings. Go ahead and make sure to mute your device Take a moment just to say that sound is thank you. So come back to that great stream of divine strength and blessings and visualize this energy right now. Like a just right sun on a not too hot day. Feel it on your skin like the energy it actually is gently warming any part of you that feels cold stiff numb grumpy tired the more you can allow yourself to feel it the better it is. Feel it like the pleasure current. It actually is. Just gently and calmly filling any place you allow to open. Feel it like a creative current, a healing flow, an infusion of wisdom. It is all these things. Keep gently opening to this force. Attune yourself to it like a satellite dish. It wants to speak to you. Ask for its help. for a deeper understanding than ever before to help you make the next step forward on your path of finding yourself. Consciously breathe it in. And as you do, feel the ingoing breath already meeting this energy waiting inside you. It permeates every particle of your being on every level. Physical. Mental. Emotional and spiritual. Feel the blissful, it's right here, right now. 
nothing to do to get it. As you allow it more and more, it, it's enlivening and at the same time peaceful. Let a hand come over your heart and just feel your own breathing for a moment. You hear a voice inside you. And as you listen, you hear it say, I am with you. I am with you. So this is what is actually real. And where we often find ourselves out of a touch with this is the great illusion. There's nothing to do but to be willing to allow To feel our natural desire for aliveness and pleasure. This is wholeness right here and now. Anytime we say yes. This force is not only in us, it is us. And where we doubt it, distrust it, block it, we're divided against ourselves. So as we gather here together tonight in our Pathwork Village, we remind ourselves that the whole plan of evolution is uniting individual consciousness. Only the actual contact of one individual with another brings us to true inner union. And that's what's inviting us here tonight. So let's take a moment and just look at all the faces on the screen. Some of them are familiar, some of them are new. Okay. And we're here to take a dive into this pathwork view about the, the spiritual significance of relationship. What does it mean to really connect at the deep of deep level of who we actually are beyond just our personality, our history, our wounding, our driver's license number, our bank account. Pathwork says that above the human level, there is only one consciousness. And, and through this, every single person is expressed differently. We're, this is the beautiful mystery of our being a complete individual. It's a unique expression of that one consciousness. And also above that human level, a single consciousness together not just in theory, in reality. So as, as you take a look at everyone here in front of you, what you see is the human level, right? 
where every one of us is, is a created entity expressed differently. And we share quite a bit, those of us here on this path together. Yet we're also each an individual form of consciousness and much of our personal work is, is learning to see how intensely identified we are with that human level of our consciousness and how it defines us and confines us. Yet this human level is both true in a limited way and at least part of our ultimate reality here now together, right? So in a moment, we're going to do a go around and just say your name and where you are on the planet and just a word or two about what you're noticing right now inside of you. And as we do this, each time someone speaks, visualize both this human level and also that above this level, there's a much vaster, richer, utterly powerful single consciousness that moves through all of us and holds each of us. But actually is the drop. We are the drop. And this consciousness, single consciousness is the ocean that's in the drop inside each one of us. And again, notice how the mind can struggle with this, yet what we're looking for here is an experience that we can help each other have. That's the power of our connecting together at this level, right? Like we can help each other make it more real than just the thought form because we're creating an energetic web together. So whenever you're ready, anybody can start. And and let's just leave it just a short pause in between to sort of be able to see the human and also the higher level of consciousness that is expressing itself through that human that's speaking. I'll go first um, so I can eat. <laughs> As some of you know, um, I can, I have a client just uh, till I get here and so I have to eat. Um, so my, I will be off video for a while. Um, my name is Kay, sorry. I'm in Chapel Hill right down the street from Brian. And um, I'm very happy to be here. This is a, a, an interesting um, lecture for me. So uh, yeah, looking forward to hearing about it. Thank you, Kay. Hi, I'm Robin. I'm flying. I'm zooming from Cal Calgary, Alberta. Sorry, my camera didn't work tonight. Um, anyways, I've, I've read the Pathwork lectures for years. I really want to know how to live in alignment with myself, and I'm a little conflicted within myself. And so I'm just hoping to become more of a whole individual that can contribute in a deeper way to, you know, unification, whatever. Love, express more love, relate to people. So thank you for having this call, Brian. Thank you, welcome Robin. Hi, I'll go next. My name is Jasmine. I'm chiming in from Toronto. Sorry, I have my video off. I usually turn it off if it's being recorded. Um, I'm really looking forward to today's um, meeting as well, but what I'm feeling right 
now is lots of thoughts in my head when Brian, you were guiding us earlier. And I find myself in that space a lot where I'm unable to get out of the stories um, that are in my head. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you, Jasmine. Welcome. This is Anne. I'm in Charlottesville, Virginia, and I'm feeling a lot of joy and gratitude for being able to be part of this group. So very glad to see all of you tonight. Welcome, Anne. Um, I'm Amy. Um, I'm really glad to be here. Um, you know, it's funny, I'm having a lot of very, very mixed sort of events happening in my life. Um, some are sort of terrible, like my father just died suddenly, unexpectedly. Um, someone I loved dearly and was very close to. And, and um, like, I'm part Ukrainian and I've been there and I help people get out of there and I'm making art about it. I'm very, very wrapped up in what's going on there. And I'm feeling a lot of joy and a lot of purpose and a lot of energy and a lot of just connectedness and this consciousness that you're describing. So very glad to be here and share all this with everybody. Thank you, Amy. Hi, I'm Catherine. I'm from Scattercoke, New York, or live in Scattercoke, New York. Um, I'm really happy to be here tonight. Um, I'm feeling a little vulnerable and sad and uh, had a hard time letting the, um, letting the light in and the joy. That's, that's an edge for me. Um, and, um, and my husband happens to be at this meeting tonight, and so I'm feeling some joy about that, and, um, it's his first time, and that's, that's just really nice. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. Uh, so I'm in Catherine's living room. I am, um, this is the first time uh, I participated in a pathway. Um, so it's just, uh, I'm very curious and very interested to learn more about this. And uh, it's just by chance, I, I, I'm very interested in learning more. Catherine's been talking about it for months, but I am, uh, so I'm interested in learning, but it's just by chance that I'm here and leaving for. For uh, India, I'm going to be away for a month and uh, a few days. And uh, so typically I'd be away Monday night at a service, but um, I said, oh, I'll come home tonight and, and spend time with you since I'm going to be away for so long. And she said, well, do I need this? So I'm here. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Welcome. Hi, I'm Bill Griever in Frederick. Maryland. Uh, it's very good to be making contact. I'm amazed that even though I've been reading the lectures for almost ever, um, every time I reread them, I learn something new, or I guess I relearn it. Um, so, in any event, glad to be here. Welcome, Bill. <clears throat> um, Esther Mulroy from Marblehead Mass, and I've been trying to pay attention to look what my what's going on with my body, so I can feel the peace. And as I feel the peace, I also feel the uncomfortableness in my body at the same time. Mm -hmm. well, particularly, like my hips, or yeah. Mm -hmm. Welcome, Esther. Hello, uh, my name is uh, Jim Walker. I'm uh, from uh, Red Lake, Ontario, Canada. 
And yeah, I'm feeling uh, fortunate to be here because living in a isolated area, I don't get a whole lot of chance to communicate with people on the path. So I'm looking forward to this very much. Thank you. Welcome, Jim. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. I'm Mark calling from Dallas, Texas. And I'm feeling just a lot of purposefulness in um, the exact makeup of the group tonight. I just feel like there's the exact number of people that should be in the group and um, just purposefulness and me being here with everyone else and the help that we all received in um, joining the group tonight and being here and participating. So thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you, Mark. I am Pat uh, at Seven Oaks Retreat in Virginia, mm -hmm. and I've really had a lovely day talking with a number of people about Pathwork today, so this is like the, the icing on the cake. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm very happy to be here. I'm Elaine, and I'm in Rutgersville, Virginia, and I'm... Just aware of a feeling of aliveness, vibration, and a tenderness in my heart. Welcome. Glad you're here. I'm Frank in Richmond, Virginia. It's good to see some old familiar faces on the screen and some new folks that I've never seen before. And it's always really great to be uh, guided by you, Brian. Mm -hmm. Really appreciate you doing this. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Frank, for your kindness. I know it's real. Thank you. I'm Judy. I'm from Toronto, Canada. I'm also looking forward to tonight's lecture. Thank you, Brian. And I'm feeling a little anxious and noticing that um, I feel like I should be showing up in a very specific way and so I'm trying to fight that and just show up. Welcome as you are Judy. My name is Pat and I live in Charlottesville, Virginia and uh, I feel the same as what you said, Frank, it's so nice to see old friends and new friends. Um, I'm feeling very full of dinner that I wolfed down and aware of um, a kind of scatteredness and self-judgment, but also um, gratitude and joy at being here. Welcome, Pam. While the mic is open, I'll introduce myself. I'm Kent Peterson, also in Charlottesville, Virginia. And like you, Frank, I am just delighted to see people that I know and love and that I've been in intimate circles with. I feel like the most important parts of my life are intimate circles, and uh, I share a number of them with some of you. Uh, this is a lecture that always appealed to me, and I often have given it to new people, new to Pathwork, because I felt like it was a really accessible entry point. And then today, I started rereading it and realized, oh my gosh, this is also extraordinarily complex, challenging, and, and has great subtle wisdom. So uh, I'm happy we're here talking about this lecture. And Brian, I'm here because you're a great teacher, and I love to learn from you and to support you. Thank you, Kent. Appreciate your support. Okay, is it my turn now? <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm Pam Chabuk, and I am outside of Athens. 
And it's really funny because I was getting ready to speak like five times as, and then somebody else would just be there and I'm sitting back going, okay, that's perfect. That's okay. But I also feel like I'm very slowed down. It's like the other day I felt like my brain was too big for my skull. Um, and I'm, and that's not a good feeling. <laughs> um, I feel I'm kind of distracted by the war, but I'm not trying not to be. Um, and so I'm having all the human feelings. And then I really felt like I was also holding a lot of stuff in of feelings as well, which I didn't realize until I heard the um, New York Ukrainian the New York Ukrainian chorus singing the Ukrainian national anthem, and I just burst out crying. Mm -hmm. um, so those things are all happening, and I'm working with people who are having those feelings, too. Um, and the positive thing is, uh, well, for, uh, first of all, I'm so happy to be here because I feel like you guys are my tribe, um, whether I know you or not. I feel like you're my tribe because you're here. But the positive is um, that I feel like hopeful because there's such negative aspects of life and human beingness coming to the surface. And I know that is for transformation. Mm -hmm. So I have hope in that sense. And um, I know that I also have to feel my human feelings mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm very happy to be here with you, Brian, and everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. Is there anybody who has? <clears throat> there we go. Um, I'm Alexandra, and I live in Harrisonburg, Virginia. And um, I just literally sort of closed the door right at eight o'clock with my last um, session and got on online. And I was so distracted that I felt like I was really struggling to get here. And, um, and, and it's really helped me settle just listening to everyone and not feeling like I had to say anything quite yet, so. I'm speaking now, but I'm still getting here. So thank you. Thank you. Welcome, Alexandra. Anybody else? So I'm Brian. I live in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, and uh, I'm feeling nervous because uh, I care a lot about this work. And uh, I want to do my best. And I don't want to get in my own way with my mind, right? And uh, I feel that that's a big part of what we're learning to do here, which is to get out of our own way. Right? And those of you that have been here before in this format know you're free to speak up at any time. Right. And if you just raise your hand, I might not see it. So let your voice out too. We're here. This is an inspiring. We're we're doing this together. So one of the things that uh, I notice often in the beginning when people come to this work. They say, oh, I, I've heard this work is really hard. The path work is really hard. You have to look at yourself, honestly. You have to acknowledge things that you didn't want to acknowledge about yourself, right? And uh, well, that's true, yet only on the most surface level that uh, what so many of us I've realized is the work is hard, yet the only thing harder is not doing it. <laughs> Let
living the half-life just in our mental duality, in our emotional numbness, is a lot harder than just turning to the parts of us, our humble humanity, right? I mean that when we look at these parts of ourself that we've been avoiding, we don't look at them like defects or character flaws. Even though the lecturers sometimes use that mater- those, those words, the way I've come to understand it is the pathwork guide is just trying to get our attention. And once the teachings have our attention, the important thing is to look at ourself with kindness, with patience, with understanding. This dilemma of being both a human being with a dualistic mind that keep want, keeps wanting to grab the steering wheel and also being a spiritual being in this human body that is aware that the human being that it's in this body with often has lost sight of its real identity. So we we all walk a razor's edge along this fundamental split between our individual consciousness driven by the mind and a higher level of oneness. However you understand that, that mystery that there's so much more to us than we can ever understand or describe, that we're so much more connected than we realize. So in those places that we don't face and haven't faced this split, and you know, this is an ongoing process. So we all have existing stages of this. We're gonna project it outwards onto the world and every situation and every person we encounter. And in these places where we haven't yet faced this split, we will experience it in our relationships. And what happens is we lose sight that what is happening in our relationship with others is actually revealing what is happening inside ourselves. So, We can't heal what we won't feel or turn away from, right? And what happens is others make it easy for us to blame them because where they're caught in their own unconsciousness, in their own duality, we can see how obvious it is to everybody but them. And uh, in a tarot deck, I use the Wildwood Tarot. They talk about our unknowable truth. And our unknowable truth is the thing about us that everybody knows except us. Our human being brain is so creative. It excels at fooling itself. So a lot of what we're doing here together in this work is just humbly, kindly, patiently, compassionately looking at where we're fooling ourselves. We're hiding parts of ourselves from ourselves. And then projecting it out onto others and onto the world. 
So yes, we're living in, in times of great turmoil, yet it, it's really valuable to remember that when we do this work to come to peace within ourself with these different conflicting parts of us, we're no longer projecting it on the world. Right? And as we do that, the level of hostility, tension, cruelty in the world comes down a notch. Like the song says, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. And trust me, there's a real impact that we have because we're now emanating a different vibration that goes into this one collective consciousness that we're all a part of. So a challenge, again, is our dualistic mind that's always judging and labeling, right? Good versus bad, acceptable versus unacceptable. So we can't get rid of these conflicts. We've got to bring them to the peace table together. And as we integrate these splits, it actually makes us more of who we really are, right? A, a unique one of a kind divine ray. And the parts of us that are turning away from these parts of us that we judge get stuck and don't get a chance to grow into this fullness. So in this work, there's a lot of emphasis, especially early on in our wounding, right? What happened to us early in life where we didn't get our real unmet needs met, where we went through trauma, pain, rejection, abandonment. And healing these parts, of course, it's valuable, it's essential. Yet, even when we do, we still are left with a struggle between our individual consciousness and the oneness, the collective consciousness that we truly are. So our, our wounding is not our fault, of course, yet healing it is our responsibility. Part of what the guide is wanting us to see in this teaching is that where we don't accept our own imperfection, we actually refuse to accept it in others. So we don't accept our own imperfection. We focus on how others are imperfect. And we develop a really strong case of how our conflict with them is their fault. If they weren't behaving this way, we wouldn't have a problem with them, right? So this idea, this view, the guide is really inviting us to look at really if we're noticing a conflict with others, it has a source inside of us. Remember, this is not saying the other person doesn't have responsibility. The guide's not saying the other person isn't acting out. The level it affects us, though, 
is where we can turn inward and see where's that coming from, right? Like this person that's affecting me is behaving in a very unconscious way. Uh, I just need to step back for a moment from that, right? But where I get personally entangled in it, there's something in me. And of course, my classic reoccurring version of this is in the grocery store, right? I want to do my zip in and zip out and get my shiitake mushrooms and my flax seeds and whatever else. <laughs> and there's two people, their cars are blocking, carts are blocking the aisle. I get so annoyed. They're oblivious. It's not like they're even trying to dismiss me, yet I feel dismissed. I feel unseen, unrespected, right? And for the thousand and one time, I'm having to realize, like, this is not about them. This is about me. Yes, they're still being oblivious. They're still blocking my progress. Yet that's not really what's affecting me. What's affecting me is this lifelong struggle to value myself, respect myself. So again, to keep remembering that these things are not a flaw or a character defect, right? This is our humble humanity our human nature. This is what all human beings do in various degrees. Even when we've taken on the exploration of it and making it more conscious, there's always a deeper layer underneath that. And of course, what I hear from people is, you mean I'm always going to have this? <laughs> there's a natural human desire to be free of it. I want to be free of it. Right? Yet what we're looking at is not being free from it. It's being more free with it. Good. I want to just pause here and say, uh, anybody has any questions or any uh, reflections this is bringing up with your own dance here with this dynamic? Amy, unmute yourself. And... All right. So I understand this on the level of my own person. Mm -hmm. And yet I always get stuck when I relate it to if this is, I mean, is it too much to ask? Like, well, what's going on in the war? Mm -hmm. So does it mean that? You're talking about the emotional experience of those that have to fend off attack then? Mm -hmm. Or not? Right. Well, I, I don't want to shy away from your question because it's a real one, right? Yet, I could give 10 different answers and they could all be true. Yet, in terms of this work, what the Pathwork Guide says is the outer is a reflection of the inner. Yeah. Right. Whatever you're seeing in the world that disturbs you, there's some version of it within yourself. Yet again, remembering the energy that we want to use with this is curiosity. Because right? some of the things we see out in the world are pretty horrific. Right. Yet, the way we often treat ourselves is horrific in its own way, right? It, there's a trap in comparing outer violence to inner cruelty. It's all cruelty. Right? So, there's nothing you and I can do right now to bring people in Southeastern Europe to the peace table. 
right? Yet what the guide is offering is there's a very real offering of peace within ourself that actually affects things out there, right? Beyond what the human mind can understand. The human mind wants to say, Brian, explain that to me, prove it to me. How can it make a difference? Right? Well, remember that's what we're reading in the news, what we're seeing people go through is on the outermost level. So, I mean, I, I feel like that was 10 too many words already. It's, it's more like an invitation rather than a explanation. Uh, yeah. I, can I follow up? Sure. I guess what I'm asking is, amongst the people who find themselves in the situation of being in the country, mm -hmm. is this sort of outrageous level of this then still a reflection of an internal like of each individual's well, let me try uh, let me try this amy let me try this and, and remember we want to try to keep it as personal as possible rather than get into yeah. politics yeah i don't want to talk about politics right. or anything kind so, of related to uh, what the guide is offering here is like it basically the guide is saying amy i see how this affects you i understand it is horrible and trust that we're all connected and that as you take on wherever your own inner war is you're doing some small important part for the whole the guide says this in a number of places you can trust that that's how real that oneness level is that we were calling in at the beginning and again so understand the mind it's not a helpful friend in understanding this because it is a mystery. This, this, this level of oneness is not something the mind can understand. It understands this individual consciousness. But I do understand what you're saying. But my question is about when the guide says that the outer is a reflection of the inner, mm -hmm. that necessitates saying that amongst those experiencing the outer physical attack on their personal being is that saying that each individual is somehow got this war inside themselves which is being manifest on the physical plane in this very large way so the people that are going through it didn't create this right well, that's that, my question. That, is, that gets more to the each question. one of us individually. That whatever you see out there, like me, Brian, you, Amy, is also in here, right? It's not saying the guy's not saying that the mother that's sitting in a subway station with her baby to get away from bombs created that reality for herself, right? That she needs to look All at. All right, that's my question. Yeah, that's my question. So it's not that. Right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for hanging in there with me. So anyway. Well, thanks else? for coming to where I was asking. Yeah. It can take me a while to get it. So let, well, the floor is open here. Let's, before we go back in, let's uh, see if anyone else want to share something that's personal for you around what we're holding here and that wherever we're struggling with somebody no matter how much the part of us that says it's their fault has evidence there's something inside of us that's calling us to pay attention to what's going on in ourselves do you need any help making that more real for yourself than just the general 
teaching of it. Frank. Yeah, I can share a personal experience that happened actually just this morning. As I was having a con conflict with my significant other, mm -hmm. which is about as personal as it gets. <laughs> um, there was a moment where in the, in the exchange where we both realized that, that I was doing some projecting. Mm -hmm. And um, it's interesting. I mean, uh, uh, maybe at another time I would have gotten, felt a lot of shame about doing so much projecting. Mm -hmm. But in the moment that we both acknowledged that there was this projecting going on, it was like, okay, you know, so I'm doing some projecting. It's like, that's going to happen, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. mm. And, you know, conversation ended and we both went on our way. And like I said, at another time, I might have carried all of that shame with me the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. I had a really lousy time of it. And, but that's not the way it ended. Mm -hmm. So, wow. Yeah. I moved and inspired, Frank. Mm. Yeah, it works. Yeah. So this is Anne, and I've got probably kind of a little follow on to that. Um, Brian, when you said we can't be free from whatever the thing is, fill in the blank, but we can be free with it, that really resonated very deeply with me. Because what I've seen is that to the degree that I'm having, that I'm projecting something on to someone else, mm -hmm. that's the degree to which I cannot accept it in myself. And if I'm able to be free with it, mm -hmm. if I'm able to say, oh, you know, fill in the blank, this is what I have, you know unlovingness, blaming, whatever it is, um, I don't have the need, you know, to, to project it out and, and I can feel better about myself. So that, that was really, really helpful to me. Mm -hmm. um, the peace around acceptance is a very big piece for me and many times I just forget you know I just forget oh okay it's okay you know I have this I have this mm -hmm. and it's okay and I don't have to act it out mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. um so I just kind of need a reminder sometimes so that was very helpful in reminding me <laughs> thank you Anne what you're uh, demonstrating is how conditioned we are to trying to be good. Right. So to be good, we repress parts of ourself that we judge to be weak or flawed. Right? And those are the very parts of our humble humanity that we actually need to turn to right then and there. Right? So. I love that phrase, it's better to be real than to be good, right? <clears throat> Richard, welcome. So, you know, what's in the way of our seeing these things that we're projecting onto the outer situation? Well, usually it's our pride. And I, I always joke about our pride that at least it's not something important. Right? <laughs> our pride thinks it's really important and it's, uh, 
it's actually an easy thing to let go when we see how little it actually does for us. And, you know, it kind of keeps us in the corner, right? Uh, and so, you know, pride is one of the key components of the lower self. Pride, self-will, and fear. And pride says I should be better than that. I already worked on that. So we're pushing it away. Uh, yet there's something underneath that pride, like, oh my God, I am still struggling with this. I don't know what to do with it. You know, that's still here. That's so overwhelming. You see, whatever it is underneath our defense system, it's really uh, where the gold is, right? And those soft feelings of the moment. Like, I mean, I'm in the grocery store. I'm annoyed with these two people blocking my way. Yet right then and there, in that moment, there's this feeling in me that I'm having idle matter in my own life, right? But it's buried. I'm out of touch with it because I hate feeling that. <laughs> I've worked on that for 25 years, right? How do I know it's still there? Because what just happened? I really want to crash through their carts with mine. I want to teach those bleep a lesson, right? They'll never do that again. <laughs> and you see the pleasure that I'm feeling here, even just visualizing them. So, you know, this brings up something really important, which is these conflicts that we're repressing, there's actually is a lot of pleasure in them, right? A lot of negative pleasure. And negative pleasure is, is an elusive thing to understand. It's not easy to understand. Like, how could it be pleasure if I'm feeling so angry and upset right now? Right. Well, remember, number one, it's familiar. So there's a certain pleasure that comes with that. Secondly, we're energized, right? We're not numb. There's a certain pleasure that comes with that. And, uh, you know, the guides view that if, if you want to let the negative pleasure go, you have to feel it first. Right? Really feel it. Only then can you realize, can I realize that, yeah, I could just plow through them with my cart, and then what? Right? <laughs> so again, you know, primarily what I want to keep stirring in here is the importance of being kind and understanding to these parts of ourself that we're projecting out on the outer situation rather than, oh shit, there I go again, projecting, right? Like, that self-attack is only gonna drive the underlying conflict down deeper, right? Can, it's really important that we keep surfacing, like what you were saying, Frank, the shame wanted to bury it, right? And there's also some part of you that said, wait a minute, let's just, that's not so bad. You're just projecting, it's okay, let's look at that. Right? So let's open the floor back up here and see, like, can, can you make some of this personal in your own physical body, emotional body, mental body? What we're talking about here is something we all do pretty much day to day, right? It's human nature left unattended. This is where our humble humanity goes. And, you know, it's an ongoing process of turning the next page, of looking at the next layer deeper of this. 
Pathwork 101. Over and over again, yet each time there's a fresh layer of liberation, of freedom, right? Like Frank, the feeling of that freedom from the shame, the conflict with your beloved, right? Like, wow, what a difference. And in those moments, it's like we're right on the razor's, razor's edge. It can go either way, right? It just takes that. The grace is there, yet that moment of our reaching for it and letting go of the familiar lifelong pattern response. So let's hang out with us for a bit. Let your voice be heard here. What do you know the invitation is for you? Is there a place in your day today that this came up? Modern life is full of vexations. Full of things that don't go our way. I knock a glass of water over. It ruins my day for a moment, right? I think, um, Brian, can I share for a second? Please, Mark. And I'm really, really hesitant to share. It's, I'm, um, <clears throat> it's um, still <clears throat> very emotional for me. And I think what I've been doing for the past couple of days is kind of reversing it and not and not looking at how pe how people are affecting my day and my interactions, but how I'm affecting other people. So <clears throat> Last week, um, last week I was a member of a jury for a trial here in Dallas, and the trial lasted. Trial lasted for a week and a half, wow. and it was a very intense trial. It was for aggravated kidnapping and double murder, mm. and we found the man guilty and sentenced him to a 55 year prison sentence. <clears throat> He's 32 years old and is currently serving an 18 year prison sentence for an unrelated gun charge. So even with parole, he will probably be spending the rest of his life in prison through a decision that I made along with 11 other people. So there's been so many things tonight that you were talking about that is just ringing bells when you were talking about the beginning, a shared consciousness above us, and that on this earth plane, we are all kind of individual material representations of that shared consciousness. Our decision in our jury room not only guilt and innocence but our sentencing we had to link and have like one unified shared consciousness we were all 12 individual human beings approaching this from 12 very different unique perspectives but we had to reach a unanimous decision we had to link our consciousnesses together to have one unified voice one unified conscious on his guilt or innocence and then on his sentencing. And so it's just been a very emotional roller coaster experience for me. Mm -hmm. It ended last Wednesday, Wednesday night. <clears throat> and so it still has been with me constantly. Mm -hmm. And so 
you know, going back to your example of the grocery store incident, which I am right there with you, that happens to me all the time, those similar type of experiences. So I'm looking at myself now and I'm saying to myself, you know, if, if I can hand someone a 55 year prison sentence and do that, knowing that he's my spiritual brother, that he's a human being, that I, I, in spirit, I love him and he loves me. If I can still hand him that prison sentence, then if someone cuts me off as I'm driving down the road, then what's, what comparison is that? What, mm -hmm. if I can do that to, to that human being, to that man, mm -hmm. who I believe he was guilty, he did very bad things. Mm -hmm. He did very bad things on the material world. Then how can I transition that into thinking what people do to me that I'm manifesting in a world where there is no injustice, where underneath this level of our egos is nothing but pure love. So um, I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm really communicating very effectively, but I'm, I'm still processing it. But. Of course. Yeah, I can feel um, your distress here, your turmoil. So rather than so I just the content, and this is helpful for all of us. Pay attention to the energy in the voice that's speaking to us about our behavior. Because if it's not kind and understanding, it's coming from our inner critic, our idealized self-image, these minions of the lower self. So really what will help is a voice inside of yourself that is saying things like, well, Mark, that was a lot. That was really intense. There's a lot going on here. I can see you're just really struggling to integrate it, right? Can you feel this starting to, you see, this is that one conscious, consciousness now turning towards yourself. Right? That only means you well. It's always giving you the benefit of the doubt. No matter how many times we stumble and fall. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, thank you. And as I'm feeling into it, I can hear it saying things like, you know, there's almost no way to explain this that the mind can understand. Like, it's a lot of mystery to what we're stumbling through and all we can do is the best we can in the moment and the next moment. Right. I, I see you smiling for a moment here, like, you see, this is- Yeah, you're absolutely right. This is what we're all seeking and you're just bringing us a most vivid example that we're all going through more often than not, right? Absolutely. Thank you so much, Mark. So, go ahead. Thank you. I know it's a big group. I really appreciate all the time. Mm -hmm. So, for describing what I'm going through. So, thank you, everyone. Thanks. Yeah. You're worth it. We're worth having you here. Okay, let yourself feel some of your own feelings here, right? Really letting ourselves gently down in the deep waters of our humanity. And there's no straight line here. Hi. Catherine. It's Catherine. Um, I'm actually a little surprised um, at my ex experience at the moment and this, the lower self experience apparently, which you've just taught me. Um, something old is coming back in this, 
as I'm sitting here with, with the group and, um, and it does make me very sad. Um, and that is just a generalized feeling of fear of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for um, bringing that forward. I feel my own version of that. You just stay and it's like I, okay. It's like I'm hiding behind my back. I'm very sensitive to energy. And Brian, you have an incredible presence. I really appreciate. Um, but I, I like just feel my back, back spiking. It's like I'm back here. I'm not even sitting here. I'm like back here, you know, mm -hmm. hiding. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just very painful. Yeah. And, um, and here I am again. <laughs> yeah. Back here, here I am again. Yeah. And I guess I just need to have patience with myself because I know I'm doing a lot of good work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm actually feeling empowered by the lessons of this lesson and other lessons I've been studying recently that I have the power. I used to resent it. <laughs> I don't anymore. I don't resent it anymore. And, um, and I don't know what to do with this place. Mm -hmm. yeah. I feel a tenderness in my heart right now. Mm -hmm. As I think about just, I have found a place in the path work, you know, and um, A degree of safety perceived. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I am really. Go ahead. What? Go ahead. I've been, I've, I've been reflecting a lot on, um, on the war within myself. Mm -hmm. And really understanding the way I contribute to war. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. I so don't want to do that. Yeah. I'm a very loving person. Mm -hmm. I know what it's like to really, really hurt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now I'm feeling that raging bully inside. Mm -hmm. That raging bully. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Very violent. Very violent. Mm -hmm. and, and that part yes. of ourself, the raging bully has been, it's a train that's been running a long time. It's yes. It's really got a lot of speed, right? It thinks it owns the tracks. Right. Yeah, that makes me really angry too. <laughs> As the bully. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, we all have our version, right? Of it. Yeah, what you said, all of us can relate to here is I'm really a loving person. I just been wounded, I've been hurt. We really relate with you here in a personal way. Yeah. And I do keep myself separate. I mean, this man you see, new man on the screen, I mean, we're very close, but I mean, I don't, I don't have many connections. Mm -hmm. I don't have a lot of my family either. Mm -hmm. For other reasons, I'm very isolated. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to change that. Mm -hmm. And it's coming very slowly. Mm -hmm. Very slowly. Yeah.
sometimes I feel in my own process like I'm draining the ocean with a bucket. <laughs> and yet there's an innocent part of me that says, yeah, it's just going to take a while, but I'm going to do it. Right. And I am doing the work. Yes, you are. I can tell. It shows just the way you're able to bring us into this whole rainbow of feeling, the hiding, the anger, the self-awareness. They're all here and you're fluidly moving amongst them. That's what we're learning to do rather than getting stuck behind our shame like Frank was saying, or our fear. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you for that reflection. So real, yeah. Someone else that wants to, or doesn't want to speak. Yeah. One of the things when I say that, it wants to speak or doesn't want to speak, in this lecture, the guy talks about a common human predicament. Like, we don't know whether to jump in or to pull back, right? We're kind of caught in between. What's that balance between over-assertion and withdrawal? But nobody else wants to speak. I have another thing to say. Let me just give another moment here. Remember, you're invited to share. I can um, bounce off a little bit of what Catherine said. Um, I too have a raging bully inside of me. Um, and I, I have been working on trying to come uh, to grips with that. Uh, the bully is mostly uh, a bully of the other parts of myself. Um, and um, I think what I, I'm starting to realize is that bully is actually also extraordinarily wounded and frightened um, because it's isolated, it's separate, and it's bullying because it gives it a sense of empowerment that it feels like it needs in order not to feel so afraid. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of where I am with it and, and just trying to um, trying to work through where um, to go with it from there. Okay. So if anybody wants to bounce off that with anything, that would be welcome. Well, let me say this, Kay, to consider that we also have projections within ourself onto parts of ourself, right? It's a, this bully in this case is not somebody in your outer life, it's somebody inside the house, right? So what is this bully a reflection of? Something even deeper in you that you hinted at, right? Like there's some way I'm getting off being the bully towards myself. I want to expose the next layer deeper, right? So uh, consider that at some point we're facing the terror of what we can't hide any longer, right? So here would be the, the terror of the powerlessness, of the feeling of powerlessness that the human being has that 
the oneness wants to gently reach down and say, I'm here with you, right? So another way of looking at this oneness that we're talking about above the human level, you know, the guy said this interesting thing in one of the lectures that it doesn't matter which lecture you read, which line you read, it can change your whole life, right? Because all these teachings really are pointing to the same matrix of healing here, right? Yet when we're struggling, we get fallen into the trap of being identified with our personal self. And from there, no matter how hard we work, we're not going to reach a level of freedom with it until we also can shift our identification to, wait a minute, I'm an angel in this human body. Right? I'm not listening to that angel. I'm listening to my inner critic. Right? What's the voice I'm not hearing? Right? What's, what's the new thought? What's the feeling I'm repressing, right? That just turning that same Rubik's cube. What's the next layer that's just waiting for me right now? So the part I wanted to bring in is that God says something really fascinating that actually what happens with the people that we allow to deeply trouble us, right? upset us, annoy us. Right? Now we become dependent on them. So at the same time, in our anger and our annoyance, we're trying to push them away. Fuck those people, I don't need them. Right? We're actually now caught trying to get them to change. They have to change for us to feel better. Whoa, Man, what, what an impossible situation that becomes. Right. So from that place, we actually pull a trick on ourselves and withdraw. Well, I don't need them anyway. I'm going to go out of my way not to see them. Right. Yet as if that did anything to what that inner knot is already in us, right? We just pushed it back down. So just from, remember, we're not doing this to be good. We're not looking at on what we project on others just to become good path workers or light workers. Or we're doing it because it's good for us. It's actually self-serving in the most enlightened way. We're helping ourselves get free of the very nagging things that keep reoccurring day after day after day. It's not the mind's fault that it wants to fool itself. It's what the mind knows how to do. Yeah. It's our responsibility at some point not to just look at it honestly and openly. Like for me, just to say how good it felt all the way home from the grocery store to be nursing my resentment. <laughs> Over those two people. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so the, the primary thing today I want to make sure we've allowed here is the softness towards self around this projection onto others, right? Like it's not something we're confessing something we're looking at with curiosity, like, wow, if I didn't have that energy, 
what would be underneath that that might actually feel really good, right? So what I invite us to do over the next two weeks is just be really curious, you know, consider doing a daily review, that spiritual practice, just write down somebody's name, a couple words, what happened, not <coughs> words, and then a couple words, the feeling inside, right? And again, the purpose of, of this practice, this spiritual practice of daily review, is we start to see the underlying patterns that we sort of know about vaguely, yet don't really pay attention to because they're so familiar. Yeah, I know I do that. So what? <clears throat> Any last minute care or concern here before we come in for a landing together? Okay, so uh, just let yourself shift for a moment in your chair just to come in for a landing, put your tray in an upright position, make sure your bag is under the seat in front of you, your seatbelt is on, right? We're going to come back into life. Yeah. I want to invite you to just gently close your eyes and Feel the nourishment that's here when we gather together. Without even having to understand it. Feel that higher level of consciousness that each one of us is bringing. Moving through each one of us, holding all of us. And gently opening your eyes and unmute yourself and holding your hands up, really look at the faces here and find yourself saying that beautiful phrase, I'm with you, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you, Frank. I'm with you. 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 And you, and you. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Brian. Brian. Thank you, Brian. Follow the breadcrumbs back. Brian. Follow the breadcrumbs back in two weeks. We'll do this again. <laughs> and and Brian, I I'd like to add something. I it. If anyone attended February's GPS and had asked for uh, my materials, I, I neglected to save the chat. So mm -hmm. please email me at elmshaw, E-L-M-S-H-A-W at Gmail, and I'll get those to you. So right. thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Lane. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Brian. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thanks for coming. Bye. Good night, Bill. Bye. Good, night. Good night, Brian. This is really inspiring. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Night, it means a lot coming from you. Thank you. Yeah. Take care, Pam. It's so you. wonderful to have Bye. you. Bye-bye. Stay alive, Brian. Mwah. Love you guys. Stay alive. <laughs> All right. Bye bye. Until. Until. Bye, bye, Amy. Bill, so glad you were here. So I, I. I'm glad it's the three of us now. Yes. Well, it was the plan. I don't know that we're going to keep you on long, but Bill, Bill and I schemed to, to do this. <laughs> so. I'm shocked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just want to give you a hug and thank Aww. you so much. Aww.
Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I keep in touch. Thank you, Bill. Yeah. 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 I feel you. I really do. You're really my brother. Mm -hmm. And it's Amen. wonderful to be in the midst of this love that you two have for each other too. You know. Thanks. Feels good. Wow. Yeah. It feels really good. We've been through a lot and we're still here. <laughs> And it's amazing how much we still have to learn. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, guys. Mm. Until. So good night. Okay. Love, Take you care. Love you. Love you.